Thank you so much for staying tuned to this channel. I still have my panelists here in the studio. We really have to take care of our sponsors and some of these uh, shows for the U-Tide. I hope you understand. Well, on this particular segment, we'll take a look at security situation in Nigeria. Shall about security today? Northern Nigeria, is it now a burden to this entity? Talking about security situation, you get to hear the North is building, you get to hear protests of saving the North, you get to hear about Boko Haram being neutralized, but are still active. Come on, you get to hear us going to talk, to talk, to talk with Erdogan, the president of Turkey, they'll tell us how to really go about tackling insurgency and all that. I want to start off with Barista Emmanuel Obakbola because you grew up from the north. That's why I want to start off with <laughs> you. You grew up there. You know the terrain. So what is happening right now in mm. the north? Mm. Is it becoming a burden to this nation? It is. Are the uh, former president, yes. good luck, Ebele Jonathan, to my mind, saw this danger when he came up with the school policy, particularly for the Almanjiris, because they are vulnerable. Mm. If, you, if you've been to the north and you stay in the north, you see these Almanjiris, mm. and uh, most of the crises that took place in the north, in Gombe, Metesine, mm. in 1984, that I witnessed even as a child, in Kano in 1991, mm. in Kaduna, in 1987, and also again the Miss World crisis in Kaduna, they were easy assets hmm. to be used. They were instruments to be used for crisis. With 500 naira, with as low as 500 naira in 2001, we're saying to one Alamanjiri, and you just tell him or him, you see that house, go and set it on fire. Don't go and set it on fire. And we started talking, but these people never listened. They say it's part of culture, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But in the wisdom of former President Jonathan, when he came, he saw it, he said, no, this person should be in school. Life should be better than this for them. Mm -hmm. But amazingly, because of politics, they abandoned the school. Some persons who had interest told them no. But today, see the situation now. And nearly in every village in the north, in every district in the north, you have one or more members of either the terrorist group or the ba uh, bandits, as mm. nicknamed by the federal government. But for me, they are all terrorists. All right. And that uh, and uh, the courts, the federal courts. In his wisdom, the and then pronounce that yes. Okay. So you now see that the body now is so high to the extent that these persons cannot go to bed with their eyes closed any longer, mm. and that is a singular reason why you saw the protest during the week last week, and the people are now crying. Say, look, we are no, we can no longer sleep. We are in trouble. The north is bleeding. The north had been bleeding for a very long time. But for reasons best known to those who, who covered it up, did that for themselves. Okay. But today, they can no longer do that. Do that. Okay. Because everybody is now being affected. affected. I'll come back to you, Barista Imana Obakpolo. Well, <coughs> uh, Raz, you're a member of the APC, and people like saying that since this administration, things have gotten from bad to worse when you talk about security, and the north seems to be the chunk of where this problem is coming from. Over to you. Thank you very much. Well, I think uh, insecurity in the nation is not political. It has nothing to do with party, whether you are APC or you are PDP. Yeah. Why I say so? Even in the past administration of uh, Good Luck Jonathan, these things have also started brewing up already, the insecurity in the north. Mm -hmm. We saw how people were born to ashes, over 100 people. We saw the, 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 the Boko Haram crime and all those things. Mm -hmm. So it has, has nothing to do with party. It has to do with the problem of Nigerian leadership. Our leaders, Alfei, 
to recognize where our problem is. They are failed to tackle our problem from the bog, mm. from the root. All they think is that building more prison, having more arms, doing this, that's not the solution to the north. If you find that in the north, one thing I discovered in the north, because I stayed in the north also, mm. there's high rate of illiteracy. And due to that high rate of illiteracy, they are easily brainwashed. They are easily frustrated. But they grew up with arms. They grew up with dangerous weapons. So automatically, the moment they grew up, like he said, the Allah Majority, the moment they grew up, there's no job. It's not educated. The job you can do is to roll a wheelbarrow. Shoemaker. Are that the solution? So I believe the government need to work on the educational, uh, the literacy aspect of the northern uh, citizens on one side. Two, to improve employment for them, improve their environment. When those things are being done, lesser will be encouraged into Boko Haram, lesser will be encouraged into banditry, lesser will be encouraged into Hesme attacks. The ISWAP, as they are also being called, the other group now, growing up. It is because there is no employment. It is because they are easily brainwashed. That is the main problem. The government needs to go on that aspect. It is not just to carry a gun and go and be killing the, the Boko Haram, killing the, the, ISWAP, the ISWAP, killing the, the bandits. Because as you are killing this one today, others are already growing up again. If you kill this leader today, another leader announces himself. He, he, re, he recruits again. How is it easy for them to recruit? It's because they have been easily brainwashed. Hmm. All right. Why in the South? We come to the South. If you see the crime in the South, are totally different crimes, like in the North. In the North, it's more like terrorism. Uh, the banditry is also like a terrorist because they come and steal, they go back. It is always hungry that still. But in the South, we only have this uh, agitative uh, terrorism mm. Mm. as our present. Mm. <laughs> that is right. the major crime we have yeah. in, the, in the South. Okay. Agitative terrorism and kidnappings. Okay, I, I'll come back to you, Samuel. Now, it's like the chunk of our money, so to speak, is moving to the North because of what is happening in the North. And all that, the vehicle zones, they are like complaining, saying, look, it's not only the North we have here. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, I, for me, mm. <laughs> it is not just the north that is leading. Mm. Nigeria is leading. It is now the turn of the north to bleed. We have bled in the south, and we are still bleeding. <laughs> we, have, we, we probably would have forgotten the activities of the militants mm. in the, the Niger Niger Delta. Delta. We probably have forgotten about the Igbe Su uh, crisis. Mm. We may have forgotten uh, what led to the OPC yeah. in the West. Southwest. And while the South was bleeding, the North kept mute. They were watching. It was like a movie mm. to them. the North. And uh, the, the, the South is still bleeding. The NSAS, what led to the NSAS protest? The protest we had here that was hijacked by uh, the so-called hoodlums. hoodlums. Mm. And if you ask me, it's governmental hoodlums. Mm. They did not participate. All right. It was seen as a southern problem. Same. All right. You just hold on. I want to go for a break. When we return, you continue with your chain of thoughts, okay? Because you talked about the south of England, this term for the north to bleed and all of that. You're going to express when more. You say it's their turn to bleed. TMI. Every opinion counts. Thank you so much for staying to us all about security situation in Nigeria. The North becoming a body, or is the North a body in here to uh, this country when we talk about insecurity? You are making a comment or a statement before we went on that break. Please continue. All right. Uh, why would the North not bleed at this time? Hmm. Uh, he mentioned when Gulo Jonathan was in power and Popo Aram was just uh, springing up. He started 
in the time of uh, uh, passenger actually. And I recall very vividly that when the elections were near and they were still holding sway in the Northeast, the then uh, president instructed that they be white, that the election must hold. And the current, the current president, we still will say it's not, he has uh, uh, renounced it, said, look, the attack on Boko Haram is anti-North. Mm -hmm. he, he had renounced it already. He has renounced it, so, so let's leave it at that. He has renounced so the, it. The, the man said attack on Boko Haram was anti-North. That good Lord Jonathan was trying to decimate the population of the North by killing Boko Haram insurgents mm -hmm. in order for the, uh, uh, the southern uh, part of the country to have advantage mm -hmm. population. -wise. He said he never said that. In any case, mm -hmm. anybody can deny anything. Buhari has never owned up to anything he has said. He has mm -hmm. never kept any promise he has made. He has never forfeit any of the legislation. You promise. cannot say so, that. I, That's your opinion, but still you I, can't say that. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Just now, the North is bleeding, yes. Mm -hmm. But we are also aware that soon after the elections, a governor, at least one governor in the Northwest, went pacifying uh, the insurgents. Mm -hmm. They were giving money. You, you, you kidnap somebody and the government will go and pay. I was pacifying them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we have also seen governmental people going to negotiate with the soldiers. A governor will stand on television for the whole world to see, and a, a, and the soldiers, the Boko Haramists or whoever you want to call them, will hang his gun, and many of his followers will be there, and you'll be talking. Mm -hmm. Gumi has come out to say that uh, the way to go is not to flush them or call them what, what they could call them uh, terrorists, mm. but to negotiate with them. Mm. Gumi has said that he knows where they stay, no police, no military officers go to the hideouts of these people. Mm. But he goes to negotiate with them, comes out to talk to us, and Gumi is walking the streets of Nigeria free of charge. But right now he we says he's a declared terrorist, he has no pact with them. That's what he, he said. He has said that declaring the terrorist mm. will not mean well for Nigeria. Yes. Mm. Of course, yeah, they have been declared terrorists, not by the government, but by, okay, the and of law. by the course of law. Mm. But before now, governors, big clerics, Islamic clerics, were have not been with them. And now that the, 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 the terrorists almost are having their way, they have their enclaves, they have the hoist their flags in different parts of the north, we still have our Rai Mohammed saying, what? Mm. That even the death of a legislature didn't mean that the insurgents were not being decimated. Buhari in Turkey recently mentioned that uh, they are now attacking soft targets. targets yes. The soft targets such as the Nigerian Defense Academy, right? Mm. Soft targets such as... Go uh, he never said soft target like Nigerian Defense Academy. Did they yes. attack the Nigerian Defense Academy? If he says that the, the, the their modus operandi now is to, uh, is to attack soft targets, and recently they attacked the Nigerian Defense Academy. Mm -hmm. And they are uh, uh, attacking on the federal highways, Kaduna, Abuja way. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. attacking mm -hmm. our, our military installations. Mm -hmm. Those are the top targets. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the president, for many years, refused to declare them terrorists. The USA, United States of America, is saying, we can help you. Buhari is going to talk to you. Everything he does, he brought. He brings in uh, religious colorations. Well, we well, 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 you are generalizing, right? I use the word everything. We do not generalize. Tell me one thing he has done without religious consideration. One. And I'm, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, the one asking the he questions has also here. Said, he has also <laughs> said that he's president of the uh, ninety-one percent that voted for. Him. <coughs> No, he's, those are the people he said I am for no one and I'm for everyone. everyone. He answered to an international uh, journalist mm. outside the country where he speaks to us that in all honesty you don't expect me to treat equally those who gave me 95 percent and those who gave me uh, seven percent or thereabout. Mm. So we are talking that's a man who speaks from both sides of his mouth. And when we say that uh, we don't bring in politics <coughs> into his urgency, the North has not just start, has just started to bleed. It may bleed the more because the government is not sincere about uh, 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 
fighting terrorism in this country. All right. Because of the set of people. If you brought in people to help you in an election, like a refined mission, hmm. and they have done their job, you are not able to settle them. In all sincerity, you have the mind to really crush them. All right. If your predecessor was going to crush them, you say uh, attack on them is attack on your people. Was it not the same boy who came to the West when how many uh, uh, cattle rearers who keep people in the farm were killed to meet uh, uh, the dead governor, your people are your people killing my people? And he went there to study the dispute between herders and farmers. He say, "Why are your people killing my people?" He went to to, to so study dispute. Have the people somewhere. All right, and I will. People the other way. I will come back to you. Now, in the north, in some local government, have been taxed to pay fines or taxes, many for millions, for them to have security to really go do their various farm work. Even a commissioner for, of, uh, of uh, communication or information in that state confirmed that that's what is happening, but they are working, they are fighting tirelessly against that. What do you have so to say about this? They, they, they say they should pay fines to terrorists. Yes. Uh, you are saying they are saying oh. it's an official something. We'll see. You know the problem. Barrister Robinson, please. The problem, <laughs> the problem we have in this country. Yes. One of the problems we have in this country mm. is the media. And mm. in my introduction, I did say that we should give things the name they bear. We should say it the way they are. For goodness sake, terrorist group are now in charge of collecting taxes, taxes from citizens. Helpless people, helpless citizens. Mm. And we are we are calling it we are saying it as if it does not mean anything the government is doing absolutely nothing to respond to that that is the truth and we also saw we had some state governors particularly castilla state governor was paying certain amount to the bandits hmm. at a point at a time the man himself saw that it was becoming a uh, just like Aero 5 uh, for Cabinet State said that uh, banditry is now lucrative. The man himself saw that ah, it was business and the man now started restraining himself. And today, because monies are no longer coming from government coffers to them, they now say, okay, we can still take the money and harm ourselves the more. And the helpless citizens, farmers, other people, citizens are now the ones they diverted their attention to. And as I speak with you, in Zafara State, in Sokoto State, in Castina State, in Kaduna State, they have roadblocks. Bandits. They have roadblocks. Hmm. And we will come out and say the budget, a, a, a chunk part of the budget goes for uh, the fight of insecurity. And then we, we are we are hearing stories. The Tukado uh, jets they bought. We are not hearing anything. Hmm. But they were interested once upon a time to take it to Oru in Imo State. But in the north where you have the problem, the Tukado jets cannot go there. Maybe because of Hamatan, they will tell us very soon. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So um, you're gonna have the last line of the discussion. The better for us to really expand on this particular topic. You heard them react to their comments. Well, we say, yeah. <clears throat> the truth has been said by my both uh, analysts, and the truth must always be said. And what we should learn to do is call the things by their name. Mm. And secondly, we should also search for the root of our problem. Because in Nigeria, I find that our leader speaks and speaks and speaks. They, they know the problem. They mm. speak about because if they don't know the problem, what they, are they speaking about the problem? Mm. They speak about the problem. They discuss about the problem. In the National Assembly, in the uh, uh, State Assemblies, they all know the problem of Nigeria. We all know where our problems are. But I believe the leadership has not taken the bull by the horn mm. to solve our problem. Because first and foremost, the northern terrorism and banditry and other things, if they are well, meaningfully engaged, the youth, mm well educated i believe it will reduce a long way right. to the aspect that we cannot go and fight the insurgents in their hideout i think it is a political statement, statement. 
because if the Nigerian army wants to flush every one of them that San Desert for a waiting 24 hours, they can, they do, can it. do it. They have the arms, they have the force, they have everything. They have the intelligence. Soldiers, they have the intelligence, yes. So what is happening? So it's politics. Okay. These bandits you are talking about, sir. They, as, as my brother just said, they said they have roadblocks. Does army officer don't pass through their roadblocks? Don't police officer don't pass through their roadblocks? Can they engage them? All right. Thank you. So Thank we you. know the problem. Thank you so, so much. The the problem. They just got to do the needful. Needful. Thank First you so, so much. Put the food on the table for the people mm. by meaningful eng engagement. Get them employed. Get them employed. Thank you. We do high crime. Of Thank you. Security. And we'll continue with this discussion because we are pressed for time right now. We have one of our, our committee members standing by for uh, him to tell us what they have in store for us in our nine essays and carols. The uh, opinion of my guest is yes. It doesn't need to do with ITV. Not too worried. We'll continue the discussion subsequently. Gentlemen, thank you so much for spending this time with us here in the studio. We'll go on a break. We'll be right back. <laughs>